Hi, welcome back. It's time for the telescope. A telescope is an optical instrument used to observe objects Yes, far away. There are other more in complicated optical instruments that also use telescopes inside them. The telescope contains two elements, an objective and an eyepiece, that are placed focal point with focal point. This means that the focal point of the first lens coincides with the focal point of the secondary lens. This makes the object be at infinity and the image too. There are several kinds of telescopes. The first one I want to talk is the astronomical telescope with two converging lenses. In this telescope, the entrance pupil is the first lens, the objective. This is the lens that collects light. That is why it is important the diameter of the objective in astronomy to collect as much light as possible from those far away stars. This first lens projects the image of a far object, let's say a star, at a focal plane of the objective. The second lens projects that image from the first lens, which is formed at the focal plane also of the second lens, and makes it the image at infinity. Then the observer places her eye at the axis pupil and forms an image at her retina. The angular magnification is the ratio of angle alpha prime over alpha. From the geometry of this telescope, it is easy to see that the magnification is minus the ratio of the focal distances, the focal distance of the objective over the focal distance of the eyepiece. Because the image is real, the negative sign indicates that it will be inverted. The second telescope is the Galilean telescope. The difference with the first one is that the eyepiece Instead of being a converging lens, it is a divergent lens. This makes the image be virtual, but because we keep the focal point of objective and eyepiece at the same spot, the image will be formed at infinity. But this time, it will be erect instead of inverted. As I mentioned before, in both telescopes, the objective lens is the aperture stop and entrance pupil. These telescopes have some drawbacks when one wants to build a large one. First is that because the index of refraction depends on the wavelength of the light, there is chromatic aberration. That is, different colors focus at different planes, giving a blur image. Second is that building a large lens is complicated and tends to include some imperfections in the lens, leaving to less neat images. Also, large lenses can get to be pretty heavy, which makes the structure of the telescope hard to manage. But we can solve these problems by using mirrors instead of lenses. Let's talk about reflection telescopes then. First, the Newtonian telescope. This one, instead of using an objective lens at the entrance of the telescope, it uses a parabolic mirror to focus the rays. But before the focal plane, it uses a plane mirror to direct the rays to a lateral aperture where it places the eyepiece. Of course, placing the plane mirror inside the tube blocks part of the collected light, which is the price to pay in these telescopes. Another telescope that uses mirrors to collect the and converge light, light sorry, are the Cassegrain telescopes. Here, there is a hole in the main hyperboloidally curved mirror, and the secondary mirror is also curved. We can use a convex or a concave mirror as the secondary mirror. The last kind of telescopes is the Smith telescope. This is a variant of the Cassegrain telescopes, but introduces a lens at the entrance of the tube. If the main spherical mirror is too large, narrow bundles of rays of light coming from different angles will focus at different points, forming those points as spherical surface. If the bundles of rays of light are wide, then rays separated enough 
will focus on the main axis, yes, but at different positions. Smith telescopes introduced a correcting plate to account for these effects and have all bundles of ray focus at the same point, avoiding this way those aberration phenomena.